Today you're going to learn how to make a 3D character cake topper using your Cricut machine. Welcome back. If you haven't watched part one on how I created this design, I'm going to link it in the description so you can go and watch exactly how we created this design using Cricut Design Space. Today is all about how we're going to actually print this design on our cardstock and how we're going to layer it to give it that 3D effect. So once you're happy with your design, you hit on make it. Once hit on make it, you'll be presented with these different screens, print then cut, basic cut, all of our different layers. And as we have made our separate colors, the colors will all be on separate mats. Usually I keep it like this to make it easier for me. Um, as you can see, we've got the yellow mat, the red mat, the black and the white. So make sure you click on the top one and we're going to start at the top here. This is our print then cut. So click on continue and we're going to have to send this to the printer. It's going to print out the image and then cut the image. So once you click send to printer, always turn on system dialog. I'm turning off bleed only because I have a white background. If I don't have a white border or background, I can turn on on bleed so go to printing system dialog and then you pick, pick the type of paper that you have i'm using plain vinyl sticker paper if you're using glossy paper make sure you change your preferences to glossy paper and then hit ok and print out your image once your image is printed from the printer cut it using your cricut machine the setting I usually use is cardstock or cardstock plus. On to our next layer. So this is the cardstock. I just go into edit to see how it is arranged on the paper. I'm going to cut this on the cardstock setting as well or poster board settings. Either one dependent on how thick your card is. So this is how the print and cut came out. Lovely. And we're going to use this very shortly to make our cake topper. So the Cricut is now cutting out the white cardstock. I have fed the cardstock into my Cricut machine. This is the glitter card I'm using. I love this glitter card. I'm going to link it into, in the description. It is so gl it's, the glitter is amazing. And also there is no shedding. So you have no glitter falling down on your cake, which can be a hazard. Um, it's the best glitter cardstock I like to use and I will link it in the description. So once the Cricut cuts, it will automatically go onto your next layer. I go onto edit. So if I do want to move around any of the pieces, I can move them around. And just like that, there's my gold cardstock cut out ready. I assemble all my layers without using glue first where I would like them to go. I like to visually see how my cake topper will come together before applying the glue the hardest part is probably when you do the letters and if you watch part one i told you make sure a lot of your letters are joint it makes it so much easier than having separate letters so i place it down to see the alignment of it firstly making sure i have all of the pieces including the dot for the i and the um hyphen this this part can be quite fiddly, so you may need to use some tweezers to pick up the tiny pieces. And this is why it's crucial to ensure majority of your letters are touching before you print the cardstock. It just makes it so much easier than if they are separate. I am using regular print stick here. I love this scotch glue. All of the items I'm using, I'm going to link them in the description. I just dot it around on the background on the white then i'm going to place the black on top making sure i use my tweezers so i don't get too much on my hands however some parts you can use your hands if you feel com comfortable so i'm going to show you that's how i do it with my hands and i'm also going to show you how the tweezers we can put on the dot of the eye or any other smaller pieces if you want you can go in with your tweezers just like this and place exactly where it needs to go the reason why i like using print stick is because there is a bit of wiggle room so if you do place it down wrong you still do have a chance to lift it back up and realign what you need to do so you can see the cake topper is already slowly slowly coming together we haven't given it the 3d effect yet but i will show you how we get that 3d effect the first one i like to do is this just to make sure i haven't lost any pieces and everything is okay now i start off with my background which is the black color 
and the gold on top. So to get that 3D effect, what I actually use are foam pieces, foam squares. So these foam squares right here, these are from Hobbycraft. However, I will link an Amazon alternative that you can just order straight to your doorstep. So you just peel them off and you stick it exactly where you want them to go. I just stick it not too much on the outside that it will show towards the inside and stick as many or as little as you want but to just make sure that the card you place on top will be held securely so i like to put in quite a few of them because i wouldn't want my cake topper to start falling apart i make this a fun activity with my daughter so we both make these together sticking on the layer so here i've put five foam squares which will be more than enough to hold it together. If you want an even bigger 3D effect, on the first one here, I have stacked some of them. So I've stacked them on top to give it that 3D effect even more. And then you just place it on top exactly where you want it to go. So you can see that 3D cake topper effects come into play. And then I'm going to pick up my next piece. I have lined these up already just so I can see how it will look and to ensure I put the right layer down because you wouldn't want to put the wrong layer down and realize you've done it I'm wrong because you may have to pull it apart it may rip so I just like to place everything exactly where it is going to go before I start to stick down just to avoid any type of mistake in your sticking down process once I'm happy with where everything goes, I go back with my foam squares. You can also use foam tape, but I prefer to use the foam squares because they are a bit thicker and they do make that 3D effect a lot, a lot better. So just like before, you can stick it on and then apply it to the background. As I mentioned, this gold card, the red glitter, there is no shedding. It is the perfect glitter cardstock because I have used glitter cardstock before and it, it sheds. That is, re it's not good to use them for cakes because, you know, cakes, people are going to be eating them. You don't want any type of glitter fragment at all inside of your cake. So this one here is perfect. As I mentioned, no shedding at all. And just like before, we put a foam piece on the eight and place it on top. And we just keep on doing this. We keep on adding our layers, adding the foam piece. If you want, you can stack up your foam squares to give it the bigger 3D depth. But for these ones, we just use the normal depth. We didn't stack them. We didn't stack up the foam squares. We just use one foam square for each layer. And then once you've put on all your layers, you just take your time, put them in. But when you place the foam squares, make sure you place it that it's not going to show through your cake topper so think very carefully about where you're going to put them and place them down so you can see it's coming together already and it's already looking so beautiful and you could do whatever character you want we chose miraculous you can do winnie the pooh or whatever your the person who you're making it for is their favorite character which is really really nice and it's, it's a nice little cake topper to add that extra bit for your cake that you have with cake toppers you can play around with them so much because the colors the color combinations are endless and that's one thing i like about cake toppers this is a very simple cake topper so as i mentioned before if you haven't watched part one on how we designed this on cricut design space i am going to link it in the description make sure you click on that description and you go back to part one so you know exactly how to design it so the last part, we didn't pull it down exactly as it was on Cricut Design Space because it would have not overlapped properly. So I just hanged it on the edge a bit here. So with these cake toppers, you can always still improvise. It doesn't have to look exactly as it did on Cricut Design Space. If you need to improvise, you can go ahead and improvise. We're almost at the end. As you can see, the cake toppers really come into shape. But before um, we go and we end, this is how I put this on. So the stick that you can um, put into the cake, I just turn it around and I tape it onto the back. However, there are other options you can do. You can use a glue dot to secure it. I know some people use glue dots. Some people also use hot glue. So you can, can get your hot glue gun and secure it. 
But today I just used tape, which was fine and it held up. It did not fall off. So whichever one you want to go for, um, go for it. And also, if you're not following me on social media, Cricut Crafts and Juliet, make sure you do follow because I do give daily tips on how to use your Cricut machine, design ideas, inspiration. And also, if you do want to become a content creator, I give so many tips on there to help you on your content creation journey. However, if you feel like you do need a bit more one-on-one support, you want me to specialise and personalise something for you, I do offer one-on-one coaching services for using the Cricut machine or to become a content creator or if you need extra help with your Cricut business. But hopefully you found this video useful. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye.